I think a lot of people get into real estate and have no idea the actual responsibilities that they incur. We're gonna go over in detail exactly what they are. And if you're new to real estate, you don't wanna miss this. Coming up. What's up guys, Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents and real estate brokers grow their real estate businesses with a path toward financial freedom. I can tell you, when I first got into real estate, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea of the actual responsibilities. I just knew that I wanted to sell some houses and get some real estate commissions, learn about real estate, learn about investing in real estate, but really didn't understand the fundamentals of what our true responsibilities are in real estate. We're gonna go over those in detail. Your number one responsibility is being honest. It's imperative to be honest as uh, a person, but also as a business person. In this business, you know, you're not gonna, especially if you're new, you're not gonna know a lot of information, uh, especially being green. There's a lot of things that you're not gonna know. And the old saying, fake it till you make it, uh, really just doesn't apply. And I think a lot of people appreciate people being honest. Even if you don't know the answer, but you state that you're gonna go and find the right answer for them, they're really gonna appreciate that. So always be honest. If you don't know something, tell them you don't know. Tell them you're gonna find that information, that intel, and then report back in a timely manner with that information. Number two is confidentiality. I can tell you my experience in this real estate business is there are so many real estate agents, especially when you begin negotiations, that they just open up their mouths and, and really disclose too much information about their client. So for example, if you have a client that uh, has to sell because they have a job relocation, it's imperative that you're not disclosing that to any other party unless that seller provides you the actual permission to provide that information to other parties. The third responsibility is listening and understanding the client's needs. You know, I think we get into this business and we want to be a know-it-all. We want to show our value. We want to um, let these people know that uh, we, we know our information about real estate and we kind of want to show off or whatever the case is. Just put that stuff aside. It's not necessary. Just make sure that you're a good listener. Ask the necessary questions and then listen intently. Make sure that you are listening to every word that they say because that's gonna help you deliver better service. Number four is delivering exactly what the client needs. You know, again, if you're listening to them and listening intently, you should have no problem being able to deliver exactly what they need. If they're looking for, you know, a single family pool home and you're showing them condos and they didn't ask to see condos, then you're definitely doing a disservice and likely they're probably gonna go ahead and fire you and move to another agent or you're gonna get the old radio silence. So it's imperative to listen exactly what they need, what their wants and so forth to deliver exactly what they need. Now this doesn't mean to get creative either. I, I've been in situations plenty of times where it was important to get a little creative because the product of what they needed or wanted wasn't necessarily there. So um, at times you are gonna have to get a little creative and go kind of think outside the box. But at the end of the day, you gotta listen to what they want and then deliver what exactly they wanted and needed. Number five, and so vital to just being truthful and honest with people, um, as well as protecting you and your licensure, as well as your broker, brokerage all together, is disclosure. If you know a known defect about a property, you have to disclose it to anybody that's interested in buying that property. Uh, prime example, and, and I've had this happen numerous times, where I've been working with sellers and they knew about something but they didn't disclose it on the seller's disclosure, in the state of Florida, it's not mandatory to have a written seller's disclosure, but it is by law mandatory that they disclose any known defects. So I've actually had to walk away from certain listings that uh, that could have been very you know commission beneficial to us, but wasn't worth our licensure because I knew that that seller wasn't going to go ahead and disclose the uh, necessary information about roof leaks, termites, and so forth that they were aware of. So do the right thing always and disclose any known defect that you know about a property to either buyers or sellers. Number six is market knowledge. 
Now this is so important, especially as a new agent, you really have to understand what's going on in your market. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? What kind of properties are out there? What kind of properties are out there for sale? Um, what kind of communities have HOA fees and restrictions and so forth? If you're a new real estate agent, um, all you ha have at this point in time is time. So I suggest you go out and look at at least four to five properties every single day in different areas. Get to know your area, the areas that you're gonna be selling. It's gonna be extremely beneficial, especially when you start showing property to prospective clients. Um, so make sure that you're equipped with the necessary market knowledge. A good way to start, as mentioned, is just go and look at properties every single day. Number seven, frequent updates and communication. I can tell you, in my experience, um, the reason why we get expired listings to list with us um, is because we update people. Um, we always do follow-up Friday, for example, if we're gonna list a property, and uh, we're just gonna update them on market conditions, any kind of feedback, um, any kind of offers, and so forth, uh, every single Friday. And many times we have to get price reductions. So when we follow up on Fridays to a seller, we're able to get the necessary price reductions. They're happy to give those. But if you're an agent and you take a listing and you go MIA, that seller isn't gonna give you much. They're not gonna give you much to, to work with because they're just waiting for that listing agreement to expire out and list with somebody else that's just gonna simply communicate. So I suggest doing follow-up Fridays. Now the same is true if you're working with a buyer, stay in front of them, stay in front of them every single week. Even if they, um, they, they need some time to think about things and, and they go back to their home state or whatever the case is and need a few weeks, stay in touch with them every single week, send them new properties, keep them updated on the market and what's going on. The more communication, the better communication that you guys have for your real estate clients, the better. And it's also going to equate into more referral business. So everybody likes to be in the loop on things. And the more that you do that, the more that you communicate, the more that they're going to refer to their friends and family, your services. Number eight is having the appropriate resources. I can tell you a uh, prime example is somebody that does residential real estate and then they take listings for commercial real estate um you know there there's you know putting a commercial piece of real estate in mls is one thing but it needs to be in other uh, online facets like LoopNet and costar and so forth so it's imperative that whatever you're working on whatever clientele you take that you can actually service that client with the right resources that you have so make sure that you're discussing all their needs and wants. And if you don't have that capability, it's not a problem. You could always co-list or, or co-work with another real estate agent that's in, say, commercial real estate and even just refer that business over. Number nine, based on referrals, referring industry experts. Now, um, this is all the appropriate parties to a real estate transaction, whether it's going to be uh, a lender, home inspection, survey company, appraiser, and so forth. You want to be, um, be that source of other good quality people in the industry. Um, I highly recommend that you uh, refer three people per field, so three home inspection, home inspection companies, three lenders, and so forth. You want to be that referral source. Even right now, I'm in the process of buying a property over on the other coast in Florida, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And I don't have that many resources out there. So I'm calling other real estate agents. I'm talking to association managers to find out the, the right parties for um, you know helping out for inspections, termite, um, even contractors and general contractors. So um, become that source for a good referral party. And also make sure the people that you're referring over, they're of good quality. They, um, they have references and and you're they're referred from other people and they just have outstanding customer service the last thing you want to do is refer somebody that is less than par or uh god forbid they take advantage of people financially number 10 be a great negotiator i understand if you're new to real estate um it can be a little intimidating but but don't worry about it a couple key things to keep in mind ask a lot of questions when you ask a lot of questions, you're going to get intel. You're going to get information to use for your client. Um, be quiet when you need to be quiet. So just let people talk. 
because I can tell you, you're gonna come across a lot of real estate agents that are gonna divulge a lot of information that they shouldn't be divulging. So if you sit back, ask questions, and then listen, you're gonna be able to help your client to the best in terms of getting the best price if they're buying or getting the best price if they're selling. Uh, for example, a, a key question I ask every time, I was, again, I was just in Fort Lauderdale and looking at a handful of properties, talking to the real estate agent, every person I ask right off the bat, usually my third or fourth or fifth question, so why are they selling? And it's unbelievable how many times that these people will just divulge the information. Um, for example, one of the condos, the, the guy said that the seller passed away. Um, that kind of information I'm gonna utilize because it's gonna show probably more motivation. That, that seller is gonna be more motivated because the family members that inherited the property most likely don't wanna deal with the property, they don't wanna deal with the maintenance of the property, the overhead and so forth. So there's probably more motivation on that specific condo because that guy divulged that information. So do everything you can about being a great negotiator. I'll put a couple books in the links below as well so you can read up on that. But um, again, ask questions, listen to exactly what they're saying, and then use that to your advantage or to your client's advantage. And lastly, number 11, go 100% all in with all your effort. Um, I know that you might be in real estate right now or thinking about getting your real estate license and you might not be able to go full time. And part time real estate agents are really, it's very difficult to go give 100% effort. So my suggestion is if you are part time, team up with somebody. Team up with somebody that's gonna be able to give that level of service. You know, you could be a, a good source for referrals or you can go 50 50, work together but you have to be able to put in the necessary time, effort, energy to every single client. If you can't, then don't do this. Don't go into real estate or and or don't take that client. You have to give everybody 100% effort. Put yourself in their shoes. You know, if you're selling um, if you're selling your house, would you hire a part-time real estate agent for one of the largest assets that you're probably going to ever sell in your entire life? Probably not. So what questions do you have for me? Respond below in the comments and I will uh, do everything in my power to respond in a timely manner to help you out. As always guys, if you got one good piece of information from this video, I appreciate you hitting the like button, subscribe, hit the little notification bell. Every time we have new videos coming out each week, you're gonna get notified of more information on how to better your real estate business. I appreciate the support, see ya.